Total solar eclipses happen all the time, once every 18 months or so, on average. In theory, you could see dozens of them in your lifetime, but you won't. The one coming up on April 8th may very well be the only one you will ever experience, if you're lucky, and I'm going to explain why. This is an experience beyond all experiences. You can't prepare yourself properly for what this is like. I've been told to see a total solar eclipse is a defining moment in one's life. The bright sky gives way to a creeping darkness. The ambient light changes, the air gets colder, and the moon slow glides into place. These brilliant beads of light shimmer and disappear one by one until there's nothing left but that dancing glow of the sun's corona, its atmosphere, giving this halo to the moon. The spiky streamers and long brushes and these shapes that you can't even describe come shooting off the surface of the sun. But the sun's rays, completely blocked. You cannot prepare yourself for how intensely cosmic it is to stand in the shadow of the moon and observe the corona. So that lead up those last 15, 20 minutes leading up to the shadow of the moon arriving on top of your head and transforming your environment. It is a peak experience. It was a peak experience in my life. Wow, I never thought I'd see this. Oh my God. In some cultures, there are entire rituals devoted to solar eclipses, and understanding what makes a total eclipse rise above the rest is a big part of its magic. Okay, so we have our sun, we have our moon, and no Earth, because you're the Earth, okay? Your camera angle that you're looking through right now represents you looking out into the sky, looking at space, and looking at the sun. So, a total solar eclipse is when the moon, which orbits the Earth, orbits you about once every month, when the moon happens to line up exactly with the sun. Which, considering the two things aren't anywhere near the same size, is sort of amazing. But your camera angle helps us explain why. In reality, the sun is about 400 times bigger than our moon, but by sheer dumb cosmic luck, it's also about 400 times farther away. So in our sky, they can appear to be the same size. I mean, that's the whole joke with that old kids in the hall head crushing skit. I pity you and I curse you. <laughs> Sorry, nothing personal, I'm apolitical. Okay, you, you, can, you can stop that. But then why don't we have total eclipses every month if that's how often the moon comes between us and the sun? Well, because the moon's orbit is not always perfectly aligned with the earth and the sun all the time at the same time. It's a bit angled. So imagine in some random month, the moon could be orbiting the earth in its off angle axis. And when it comes directly between us and the sun, it might actually be here. So it's not actually blocking the sun at all. Or maybe we only get a partial eclipse, which is when the moon passes over the sun, but never quite completely covers it up. Or sometimes because the orbit is an oval, it's not a perfect circle, meaning sometimes the moon is farther away from us than normal. It actually appears smaller in the sky than the sun. We call that an annular eclipse. Or maybe you've heard of the ring of fire eclipse. Same thing. But the moon casting a shadow on the earth in such a precise way so that the sun and the moon are exactly the same size in the sky and they overlap exactly one on top of the other. That only happens once every one or two years. And for you and me specifically, depending on where you live, April 8th might be even more special than that. In reality, the moon's shadow on Earth will be like the head of a pin at any given moment. So while we have very precise knowledge of exactly where that pinpoint will be at any given hour on April 8th, it's so small and it's moving that the odds of you ever having been in that sweet spot before 
are pretty slim. Because sometimes that total eclipse is over the ocean, or the southern tip of Africa, or slicing through Japan. For a city in what's called this path of totality, to ever find itself in that shadow cone again, on average, you'd have to wait about 375 years. Mostly we have to go all the way around the world and back to see these things. This is a gift coming to us. So to be in that 180 kilometer wide moving pinpoint, as the moon's shadow cuts a swath through Southern Ontario, Quebec, and the Maritimes, the closer you are to that circle's center, the longer of a total eclipse you'll get to experience. Maybe as many as a few minutes, if you're in the right place at the right time, and if you have clear skies. That's the real wild card, and why the most dedicated eclipse chasers out there are all heading to Mexico. So I've chosen Mazatlan in Mexico. It's way down on the Pacific coast of Mexico, looking out into the Pacific Ocean. And when you look at the whole path of totality this time, it has the greatest chance of clear skies. Then as you move up into the United States and then across Canada, the chance of clouds increases as you go along. So I'm choosing Mexico simply because we have a, a very high likelihood of seeing the thing. I should be clear. If you're not in this very specific shadowy band, that means you will not see a total eclipse. You will see a partial eclipse. That's for almost all of North America. But know this, the chance to see a total eclipse anywhere is very much a limited time offer. The moon is actually constantly getting farther away from us by a few centimeters every year. Its orbit gets wider and wider. So in about a billion years, there will be no more total eclipses for anybody on Earth.